if you've been around me for any length of time, chances are you've seen me with a cup of coffee, or I've invited you out for coffee, or you've heard me express a need for coffee. Coffee occupies a, a pretty central place in my life. Because of my deep devotion to coffee, I frequently found coffee-related gifts wrapped up on holidays, Christmases, birthdays, Father's Days. I actually collect different ways of brewing coffee because there's so much more to life than automatic drip and single-serve Keurig. There's, there's the Chemex pour-over method, there's the French press, there's the mocha pot, there's the aero press, there's the vacuum siphon method, there's the Turkish coffee, and, and of course there's espresso. Now, whenever I receive a new method of brewing coffee, the other methods don't just go away. Rather, in a way, each new gift helps me to appreciate, savor, and enjoy the old gifts even more. Few things bring me as much joy as an abundance of coffee brewing methods. It means that there can be coffee for all occasions and all situations. I love them all. Each helps me to live just as God intended each and every day. Good gifts are like that. Gifts don't erase or cancel out other good gifts that we've received. Like, if I get my wife a particularly good gift one year for our anniversary, it doesn't mean I'm never going to give her another gift again. We keep giving gifts to the ones we love to remind them of our love, to show our love, and to celebrate our love. That's exactly what's happening at Pentecost. We can get lost in the bombastic storytelling, but we frequently miss the backdrop of the story and what the writer of Acts, I think, is trying to tell us about this incredible moment. No, it's not really the birthday of the church, though I know it's popular to think of it that way. And it's definitely not the reversal and the undoing of the Tower of Babel, even though the lectionary offers this as a companion reading. The backdrop is actually right there in the text. It's Pentecost. Or if you were actually there in Jerusalem on that first Pentecost, you would have called it Shavuot. This was one of three pilgrimage festivals for the Jewish people. We'd call it the Festival of Weeks. It's a huge and celebratory harvest festival where they celebrate the reaping of the grain, but it was also a celebration commemorating God giving the Jewish people the Torah, the law. It was a celebration of this incredible gift from God, a gift in which God comes down from heaven to offer us a guide, a way to help us live just as God intended, at one with God, at one with our neighbors, at one with each other. I love the way the godly play classes refer to it, not as the Ten Commandments, but as God's ten best ways to live. And so this festival celebrating God's gift that helped people live the way God intended was the perfect time for God to give us another gift, much in the same vein, the gift of God coming down among us in the Holy Spirit to show us and to guide us how best to live. And to be clear, this isn't a replacement gift. Remember, every single person who receives the gift of the Spirit in the story is Jewish. And they continue to be Jewish. In the book of Acts, when they talk about reading the scriptures, they're reading the Torah, the Jewish sacred texts. The gift of the Spirit isn't God saying that the other gift of the Torah no longer counts or, or has been canceled. This is God looking at God's people and loving them so much that God, having already given them this incredible, perfect gift in the Torah, loving them so much, God gives them yet another good and perfect gift. It's like God coming down and giving you a mocha pot when you've already got a French press. Both help you to live exactly how God intended. It's just now instead of one, you've got two. Pentecost is a day in which we celebrate the abundance of gifts God has given us so that we can live as God intends. And yeah, the day's a little bit over the top, but this day should really orient our souls to see God's abundance around us, much like the ancients would on any harvest festival, like Shavuot itself. This day should heighten our souls to see God's gifts around us, 
in the sheaves of wheat, and the many hands involved in reaping it and growing it, in the good earth from which all our sustenance comes and for which we are to care. For our communities in which we can gather and celebrate. Friends, family, normal, everyday things. It's like Thanksgiving. And we give thanks for the good gifts that help us to live in God's love. <laughs>